um, an associate professor at the College of the Mainland in Texas City, Mainland. Um, she has bachelor's of arts in teaching with a minor in mathematics from Sam Houston State University. She has a master's of education in mathematics education at the University of Houston. Marilyn's been nominated Teacher of the Year, and she has, says her greatest honor was from a student who took her for three different math classes and nominated her for Who's Who Among America's Teachers, and that was just a couple of years ago. And of course, her most recent honor is be, being a Lesson Challenge honorable mention for two of her math lessons. You're going to see those lessons today. And just as a quick aside, a couple months ago, we had a competition for the best lessons that our clients have developed. We had 85 lessons submitted, and they were really remarkable. Those lessons are, are on our website for you to view, and the honorable mentions, two of them are from, from Maryland. Um, Maryland started getting interested in technology about four years ago. She started using Blackboard for quizzes and then started learning PowerPoint. And for the next three years, she used Blackboard, PowerPoint, and online homework for her face-to-face -face classes. She heard about soft chalk at a Texas Distance Learning Association conference in April of 2008. Now, just remember, that's just a little over a year ago, so she hasn't been using this for a long time. And in the past 13 months, she's written 12 math lessons and using soft chalk. And she says she spent an average of 20 to 30 hours on each lesson. So having said all that, I'm going to turn this over to Marilyn so she can show you what she has been doing. So Marilyn, if you're still with me, can you take it away? Yes. Do you see my screen? I can see your screen, and it looks great. OK. Uh, as Steve said, I'm Marilyn Larson. And this is using the text popper. And I'm from College of the Mainland. And College of the Mainland is on Facebook. And so here's a couple some pictures. Looks like a hot summer day. And let's see if I can. Now, if you see the first part of the lesson, this is using Style Builder. I just discovered that, so I was using it for my introduction page. You can pick a style, add an image that goes right here. Choose a color for your heading, your text body, and your font. And then this scrolling in where it says math is fun is called a marquee. And I can give more information on that later. You will need paper and pencil to take notes today. I want you to be able to write down the lesson that I'm on and the page number. So that, that way, if you have a question, we know what lesson to go to and what page number. All good lessons that you start, you could use a video to start your lesson. I know about a year and a half ago, everyone started using YouTube videos. So this one is with numbers, and it's a great video for the first day of class. Or you might use a joke to start your lesson. The teacher says, who can tell me what 7 times 6 is? The student says, 42. Teacher says, very good. Who can tell me what 6 times 7 is? And the same student says, it's 24. So I have that joke down on my multiplication page. So I just Google and get some jokes. You might also want to do a survey. This is from Poll Daddy. If you, I do this for my lessons on percents. And the students, you could have the students come up and each vote. And then you could talk about the graph that is displayed uh, with your lesson on percents or any introduction to a lesson. And then if you are logged in to Poll Daddy, you can also get a circle graph. and. That will also lead into an introduction of your lesson. What are some of your favorite ways to introduce a lesson? Also, we have a sidebar. And with the style builder, you can um, adjust your style, style, the sidebar to your liking. Now, right here, I have an arrow. I click on the arrow. And what I'm using is the new version 5, the e-course, where you can upload different lessons and not have to click in and out. So now I'm going to my first lesson on whole numbers. Then I click on the arrow so you can get the whole screen with your lesson. 
Now this is the timeline, and so in math I don't use a timeline too often, but I thought we, sometimes we have to talk about study skills and time management, so you could give an overview of how long it's going to take that you will be on this lesson and get an idea of when the test is and talk about study time and time management. Okay, this is um, it's hard to see my scrolling bar. I guess I'll do the arrow. All right, whole numbers. Now I'm going to start off simple because we, I teach developmental math, so our lowest level math class is basic math. But you can get ideas, hopefully, for my um, lessons here using whole numbers. And here we have standard notation, and I, I started using the table a lot this, just recently, and it helps organize your definitions. And your, you know, in math we have steps, and, and so it just helps to organize. I did a place value chart. This is in Microsoft Word, and then I uploaded it to SoftChalk. And so with math, it's always great to do the drag and drop. That's an easy activity. To do, and so this is with place value, and then I get I have tables again with definitions, and then this is with the flashcard. I love the flashcard. You can put a picture on there, and because in math we don't always want the students to see the answer right away. So in class, in my face-to-face -face class, this is projected on the screen, and as I'm lecturing, I'll be asking them to write this in expanded notation. So up here's the directions. Then they will call out the answer. You can have someone come to the board, and then you'll click Show to see if they got the right answer for expanded notation. So the flashcard, is used, I use that a lot. And then you can also use a table. But again, with the table, your answer will be showing. But that could be a review, and it does great with pictures, the images. And again, the flashcard, we're doing the word name. And then I have the quizzes, different places in the lesson. And with your quizzes, you can put pictures. And that makes it a lot more interesting. And you, I go over these in class also, but not every quiz question, just showing them how to type in their answer, especially at the beginning. And then we go over these in class, and they could do the, they could do the work on the board at their seat. And then you can type in the answer and see if they got it right. I just do a few, though. And then later, I take my class to the math, uh, the computer lab, and we will work on our online homework and some soft chalk pages and see who is paying attention to these quizzes and these activities. So half the time I'm in the classroom lecturing, and this is just makes the lecturing so much easier. I don't have to write a lot on the board, and the notes are right there for them, and they can print it out. And then the, uh, the next half of the class, we go to the computer lab. This is in PowerPoint. I made it a picture and then uploaded it to SoftChalk. And you can see we have our properties displayed. And again, we have the drag and drop activity. And again, I, as, as I said recently, I just started using the tables, and it's, I love the tables. For definitions, display the perimeter and how to work it out. And Steve, we were going to take a poll on how many what they're teaching. May we, but um, so I'm just assuming every we have a well, wide that, different. That's a good idea. I failed to do the polls, so um, let's let's ask them what what discipline they're in. Okay. I okay. Will, well, I, I launch the poll now. Shall okay, we? and I can still keep talking. Well, yeah, you can talk. They can't see your screen very well, but they will oh, okay, be able to, to to hear you. So at this point, let's find out. You know, I expect most of you, most of our audience, are going to be math and science educators. But um, which is what we're finding. So I'll give another s few moments for them to do it. About three quarters have voted. Um, so let me uh, close the poll now. And okay, they're still voting. Hurry up so I can close the poll. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. The results are interesting. While Less than half of you are math or science teachers, which is what we hoped, because I think there's a lot to learn from here. OK, I'm going to hide the results and turn it back over to you. OK, thanks. Now, what did you say? Most of them? More than half? Uh, less than half. 44% were, were math okay. or science. So yeah, they were all over the map. 
so hopefully the um, if you're a different in a dis different discipline, you incorporate some math into your lessons. And because as math instructors, we incorporate other subjects into our lesson, into word problems and vocabulary. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can write your lessons out. And this is, again, a picture that I did this in PowerPoint with the arrows and writing it. And then I saved it as a picture and put it in soft chalk. And then again, we have the flashcard. And then this is a word problem. And this is with a table. And you are able to hide the border on your table if you use your user guide on page 135 of the soft chalk user guide shows you how to hide your table and you can put in your images really nice and neatly to help you with your word problems and we would work this problem in class and try to get all those active learning strategies in and learning styles and then this just and then we'd go over some of the quizzes not all of them they would go to the computer lab later to finish to work on those quizzes now this is the new essay question. So if we're in the computer lab, or you could display this on the, on the projector and just have the students write it on a sheet of paper and turn it in. Your, you know, a word problem to write. Here they're supposed to describe two situations that correspond to a subtraction problem using takeaway and how many more, and getting the students to write. So a way to use the essay question in math. Then we have rounding and estimating. So again, I'm using the table to show the steps for rounding. I have a picture to help, uh, to help me talk about the rounding, because a lot of this is just helping me to explain it with the images. And we click Show to get the rounded answer to 100. So this is just helping me, because I am not good at drawing. So this is great to already have the images up there. A table, again, for rounding to help me as I explain. And I just take a ruler and point to what I'm talking about. And again, we have the flash card for estimating answers. And we do this in class. Students would come to the board, work, work it out. We'd talk about it. And then I'd click to make sure I got it right. And we, we, they got it right. And then again, this was in PowerPoint. And I, and I put it in soft chalk to help with the visual and explaining. And then using the table. So I just found soft chalk to be so much helpful. And instead of saying, You'd still say turn into your turn a page so and so in your book, but the visuals to display already is so great because I tell you sometimes I have to draw things in math and I cannot draw, and this has made it more fun to come into the class. Okay, and then we're in multiplication, and there's my joke that I used earlier, and we have the uh, the properties of multiplication in a table and the drag and drop, and then some quiz questions I've labeled self-check. And they are, they are not allowed to use a calculator, so we would be doing this on the board, step by step, and then they would type in their answers. So if it's just one answer that they can type in, I don't use multiple choice. But sometimes if there's, OK, they could type this in several different ways, 3.03. 3. You know how sometimes they put 0, .0 for whole numbers. And uh, then you might, if you have to remember to add those in, to all the different ways that they could type in an answer, or you might want to use multiple choice. Again, this is division, and I did the uh, pictures in PowerPoint, the writing, and saved it as a picture. And then I have my table with my definition and the flashcard again. And then the table is this is to talk about when you can't, a number divided by one is itself. A number divided by a number is 1. So this is just helping to explain those rules. And they can print this out later, write it down. And this, the tables are a good way to show that, very organized. And then we have the sorting. And this is, I like this. You click on the card, and they are going to sort it with the simplifying rules that they did. Can't divide by 0. And, and then you could talk about these in class as they are displayed. And hopefully they will get those simplifying rules down, the sorting activity. And then this is just going over definitions, which one's the quotient, the divisor, and the dividend, the labeling activity. 
and then I, every once in a while I put in a website, and then we have our quiz questions. So this is with whole numbers, and hopefully that helps show you some ideas that you could do for your lessons using tables and all those different um, activities. This is also something you could do where you, you, you know how it doesn't matter what number you pick, just follow the directions, pick a, well, you know, follow the directions, pick a three-digit number, the first digit large and the last, at least by two, and you know, you'd go over this with the students, they pick their numbers, and you always end up with 1,089. Uh, Google for those types of questions. And see, our objective here was adding and subtracting. So by doing this fun activity, they're practicing, they're adding and subtracting, and they don't even realize it. I have two different types here to, for the hot spot, which one's the dividend, and they click on it, and see if they got it right. This is a little bit bigger, so I, what I did, I did it in PowerPoint, saved it as a picture, and put it in the hot spot. Or in the hot spot, you can do equation editor. As you can see, though, the PowerPoint made it a lot bigger. So look uh, at Marilyn, the different let, choices. Marilyn, let me interrupt for a moment. Uh, you asked me to let you know when, you have a, when you're about 15 minutes down, so you've been on for about 15 minutes, I think. So okay, so I'm talking a lot. Like. Thanks. So just showing you those, these two differences so you can see what PowerPoint makes it the image larger and equation editor is not quite as large for the hot spot. And then I put in some videos every once in a while. And we have the score. Okay, so I'm talking too much, so I don't want to tell you all how to teach or anything, just give you an idea of how to put in your content. So that's why I do want to encourage you to watch the archived webinar, that way you can look at these, pause it, and think about how you could use this in your classroom. Here's the tables for definitions. And so again, I have steps putting that in a table. And this is the sorting activity, using that again. That's popular for me. And it's great to have the quiz questions you, when you have the pictures that you can put on. OK, so this is 1.7 to 2.2 if you have any questions with this lesson. Here if you do exponents, this was in PowerPoint again, and I've loaded it as a picture. And then we have the sorting. And I wanted to show you the difference. This is Equation Editor in Soft Chalk. And if I can get my brain working to do this. And I wanted to show you, hope it comes up. OK, I also did it in PowerPoint also, so you can see the difference. Equation Editor and using the image in PowerPoint that you can upload. And then we have. I got interested in tables, and we have order of operation that the students have trouble with. So, and another essay question to use. And again, if you don't go to the computer lab, you can always have them write on a sheet of paper and turn it in. And with fractions, I did it when I first started off with my lessons teaching fractions. And so here we have a video and a joke to get started. And fractions has a lot in it. So we have tables. Again, did I just, oh, did I go to the wrong page? I think I did. All right, um, sorry about that. Here's the divisibility rules, and I like this one because I use the text popper. You hover over, and you can get the divisibility rule for two. And we, so in class, we can talk, what's about the, what is the divisibility rule for two? Talk about it, have them write it down, and then you can do the text popper to see if they're correct or as they're reviewing on soft chalk. And another sorting activity with prime and composite numbers. So fractions was my very first thing to start with. All right, let me go to another lesson. And let me go to the up, a little bit upper level math, in case you're upper level. And we'll start talking about the graphing. And this is the marquee. And I have a website that I'm going to give you if you're interested in the marquee, where it just scrolls across for a little fun variation. And again, I'm using the table. And this is, in, this is with WinPlot doing the graph. And I have a website for WinPlot. And here you, this is a hot spot. And I'm going over it as we talk about the different quadrants. 
and it also labeled, has the x-axis. That's using the hotspot. So this is great for just helping you to teach face-to-face. -face. And then you could also do the labeling activity to see if they understood from the hotspot. And here we have the flashcard again, and they are to name the ordered pair. So they would be doing this in class, on the board, on, a, on their paper. We would talk about it and see if they got the answer right. Now, if you have a fraction, you can use these little dotted lines to get the half mark. And that's called an anchor in Winplot. And then you can also do graphs and put them on your quiz questions. And in this multiple choice, there's several different answers. So this one, it says mark all the correct answers. They're naming the points that are on the line. So you have lots of different types of questions that you can ask with the quiz me. And so here's some more graphing. Talk about the number line first, and then we move on to graphing linear equations. And this is in PowerPoint that I put up on SoftChalk, and we'd be talking about finding the answer for y or for x, and then give them the opportunity to come up and label, or they'll be doing it at their seat, putting the answer in the correct spot. And then Instead of labeling, oh, here's to where they have to just click on where the negative 2 goes. They click to see if they get it right and let them know if they didn't. That's for the quiz type question. OK, so that's for graphing. And then here, the table makes it really nice so you can show the steps of your problems. And you can talk about the steps. You can also use your transparencies that you're used to using. I, I have poster board that I put on the board. But now that I have soft chalk, this is going to make graphing so much easier. And I just uh, to not have to use those transparencies all the time. And over here, they get a black, the blank graph. And then I did a text popper to where they have their answers to check them. Because you didn't want the answers, everything to be shown already. So the text popper allows it to show your answers later. So you have to be clever and creative. Nothing here for the x and y, but I have a text popper. OK, I'm going to help you get you started. Let x be 0. And then we talk about it in class and fill in the table. OK, and we have our special graphs. So those are very nice to display. Usually with the transparency, I can only do one graph at a time. And with soft chalk, I'm able to show all three at the same time. And we can talk and discuss about the differences. So I just found it so convenient. They, and you, here you have the hot spot to see if you can get pick the equation of the line. And your, some questions. And I just get my questions from the textbook, from the homework, or make up my own. And then here we have more on graphing, intercepts. And then we'll talk about these in class and graphing the intercepts and the answers. And then they'll have a quiz me to where they have to type in the x-intercept or the y-intercept. So hopefully that's a little bit higher level for some of you, if you have higher level teaching. And then we're talking about slope. So as you can see, I like using the table once I discovered that. You have your graph, and then you have the steps for finding the slope of the line. And then you have your special graphs, the undefined slope, and the zero slope. And you can label it. So all these different activities. And then with the photo album, we talk about is this a zero slope or an undefined slope? Zero slope, you can play tennis. Now, you wouldn't be able to climb this wall if you did not have a harness. So that's undefined slope. So that's how you can use the photo book, album in your lessons. So we just have to be creative with all these activities. So I hope you're able to go back through here and think about how you can use these for your creativity. Okay. So most of these are similar, using the tables and explaining. I guess I could stop a little bit, and then if you have the archived webinar, you can pause it and study it to help you get ideas. Yeah, there were, there were several questions as you spoke about how some of the 
how the hot spots were working, how you got some of the colors in there. But we'll talk about that during the Q&A because, yes, you're going pretty quickly through some of this. And you're right, looking at the archive is going to be helpful if they want to get some, some more details because you're working really fast. And right. So well, I, didn't wanna end, I, I don't want to end minute. up teaching. Okay. I don't want to end up teaching math to you. That, but, yes, just the different ways that you can display the math problems. Graphing it and finding this is using the point slope form, finding the equation of the line. And wind plot is the one that does the different colors for your points. In wind plot, you can choose the color of your line and the color of your points. It's a free download. And then at, for your activities, it's good to have, let the children, uh, students choose what activity they would like to do. So here I'm giving them choose three of the five activities, because some may be more challenging than others. And then you can find out which activities are more popular. Because this one's a little bit challenging, but then in a way you don't want to get rid of it, because some students can do it, the, la the labeling activity. Here's a simpler lab labeling activity. So maybe once they do that one, they can do the more challenging one, where you have more lines and points. And then we have to click on the undefined line. And that's the hotspot quiz activity. Okay, so let's see, I've got to go back up here to the top, get my arrow, and then I can show you the geometry lesson. Go back to my arrow so you have the full picture. And I didn't use marquee on every lesson. This is for a different class, so I thought for this class they might like to see the marquee coming in. And we have perimeter, and this is in PowerPoint. And then I just, I haven't gotten into tables just yet with this lesson. I'm scrolling down, and you can see me explaining it. And for geometry, with every, we always have to review. We have to always review formulas. And it's great to show those pictures, because otherwise I'd be on, on the board trying to draw a rectangle or a square, especially a circle is hard. So it's great to have those images already in soft chalk. So this is the lesson that has been on soft chalk, and you can hover over and get the formula. And we go over this in class because they have a hard time memorizing formulas. So it's great to already have these pictures up there. And then we have the flashcard again showing the formulas. And you drill them in class. And that's the quiz me before I got to the table, as you can see. So you can see which lessons I did earlier before I got into the learning more about the tables. And so we have circle. And then we could do the drag and drop. And then this is a marquee that you can also use. It's called a ribbon. And also, with this is the slideshow, you put a PowerPoint in the slideshow. And here I was helping them to learn the first eight digits of pi. Count the number of the letters in this phrase. My ha may I have a large container of coffee? And there's 3.141526. So you get creative on how you can help them memorize. And that was using the slideshow. And this is just another way. This was using the flashcard, if you prefer that. So you just be creative with the activities that Soft Chalk provides. A pie song. So geometry has a lot that you can provide. Quiz question that also has a picture to go with it. So I just love the images that, you can, that you're able to put up. Then we have volume, where you can hover over and get the formulas. So a lot of these are similar. And then my picture in PowerPoint that I put on soft chalk. And this is with Geometer Sketchpad, putting the pictures on soft chalk. And again, we're going over our formulas. And this is the, uh, going over angles, different types of angles and the crossword puzzle. OK, so how much time is left? Well, you've got about three or four more minutes, because I'd like to uh, sort of slow it down so we can get to some of the questions that have, been, that have come up. OK. And then we have where you can do square roots. So I have the flashcard. So you can see what activities are popular with me. 
And this data and graphs is on the SoftChalk website. So in conclusion, uh, when, you're, when you are concluding your lesson, some of you might have heard of the one minute paper or the muddiest point. And here the students can type in what the most important thing that they learned today or what they're still having trouble in and turn that in. Or if you're in the computer lab, they can print it out for you. And in the next class time, you're able to go over what, they, what the muddiest point was. And I want to just thank SoftTalk for this opportunity and everyone at College of the Mainland that has helped me. I try to figure out a lot of this stuff on my own, but every once in a while you know it's going to take a long time. So you go, can you help me just a little bit? And you might end your lesson with a little uh, joke again. Why was six af afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. And again, I typed that in wrong. There's so many ways that the students can type that in. So again, you might want to make that multiple choice or not even. But here, you, when, if they do get it wrong, you can see all the ways that you have provided for them to type it in. So you have to remember that with math. They could, all the different ways they can type it in. So then you might want to provide a multiple choice question. So I hope you will view the archived webinar to get more ideas. Send me your favorite websites or shortcuts, and I can add them to my document and send them out to anyone who is interested. I have this document. I'll bring it up. So if you want to, you can watch it on the archive and write down these websites. These are tutorial websites that I've used that are fun. And the dic there's a math dictionary, Poll Daddy, and this is the marquee, the website that I used to get the scrolling up and down, uh, going across. It was a, a good website. And for this, I watched one of SoftChalk's archives and got that idea. So watching the archives gives you other ideas. This is Winplot, the website, or you can just Google Winplot graphing. There's videos. It took about 15 minutes to learn how to make the graphs. It didn't take long at all. So I could put them on SoftChalk. And oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. It was one of those good websites. Grease typicals. One of those fun websites. Here we were talking about reciprocal. And again, I had earlier I had where the answer was showing. What's the reciprocal of five six? We use the text popper and they have to guess it in class before you show it. So the text popper is great for showing answers later. And this is a website to find the reciprocal of a fraction for those visual learners. You click right here on this arrow and the it gives you the reciprocal of the fraction. So I have, I've listed some websites that are fun for those visual learners and to do in class. Wow. Okay, so I'm ready for questions. All right, all right. There's a lot that you covered here. And so some of the questions were because you were going fairly fast. Matter of fact, I think what I might want to do at this point is if I can find the person. Um, uh, Twyla Masakai, who I don't know if I can quickly find her. I had a, several questions, and I didn't have any way of figuring out exactly what she meant. So I'm going to turn her, her microphone on. Twyla, are you there? Can, does your microphone work? Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I, we can hear you fine. Do you want to um, say what your question was? Because most of the people who ask questions, I figured out what they wanted to say, but yours, there, it was it was pretty complicated, so I thought I'd just let you ask and talk to Marilyn directly. Yes, my question was, well, I understood the win, um, the win plot with a, I have a Mac, and so with the Mac, we have our own grapher where we can do that. But my other question is, a lot of your hot spots and your drag and drops have different colors. Is that because of your template, or is that because of um, you chose that? Because we have a certain template with our school that we use. I don't know if we can change those colors, but I was just wondering. Now, the drag and drop, I think, we're, we're, I don't have colors. They were all black. Now, the sorting, uh, I use yes, that in power. Is sorting is PowerPoint, and I changed okay, the colors so in PowerPoint. So that actually was your background in the PowerPoint, the green 
And then oh, right that's soft. The hot oh, this green right here? That's soft chalk, one of their styles. No, no. In your, in the actual either hot spot or sorting. Right here? No. Like that one has a blue ground, blue background. On some of the okay, other ones know. you had pink. On some of the other ones you had yellow. The actual background, not on the card, the background. Well, let, 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 let me interrupt this because I think maybe we have to go offline uh, for this detail. But soft chalk style imposes colors in its learning activity. So if you choose a style, that color is going to try, in many cases, to be part of that background. But um, I, I need to move on, okay, so if you don't mind. Tyla? Yeah, that's fine. OK, thanks. Um, the, the other questions, um, one of the questions had to do with the fact, uh, Marilyn, that you had a, a kind of short answer essay questions. And they asked what you do about including math notation. I know that we can include math notation like square roots in our short answer essays. How do you get around that? Oh, I don't ask, I haven't asked those types of questions okay. in the so essay make, questions. Just, now, the essay <laughs> is new, isn't it? So I have not, this yes. is what I plan on trying in the fall. But for my essay questions, I just, it was just typing in whole numbers or just making a word, writing a word problem with whole numbers. Fractions, they can use the slash bar. But I haven't gotten into, I don't, I don't have essay questions with square roots. Okay, another question um, was that um, had to do with your importing of images and the fact that you use a variety of tools. The, the most of the tool you use is PowerPoint because you're used to that. And let me just sort of comment editorially that you can use any tool for creating images. If you, know, if you want to use Publisher or Word or I use Snagit a lot to capture things off of this from other resources or to edit them and add um, image information. Um, so you can use whatever tool you want. Um, in a conversation, Marilyn just simply said that she was just used to creating all this content with PowerPoint. So that was her tool of choice. Um, now, you have to remember, I do not have a degree in technology. I'm not an online instructor. So I'm very basic. Whatever I learn first, I usually stick with it because <laughs> I can't take in a whole lot of information. Okay. And so PowerPoint is what was easy for me. Okay. There's a question about ge geometers, geometers that you did Geom for those, ge yeah, the, ge the, the moving ge geometry oh, okay. uh, images. Yes. That was Geometer what, what, Sketchpad. Geometers Sketchpad. G-O-M-E-T-E-R-S. Geometers? Yes. Geometry okay. just with an E-R at the end right here. Geometers Sketchpad. Oh, this one right here? Yeah, that's what they wanted to know about. That oh. is something else that you have to learn. The math is not easy. You have to learn a lot before you, you know, in, for pictures, for images, you know, for graphing. There's things that you have to learn first in order to put it on soft chalk. That's why it's taken me 30 to 40 hours with these lessons. A couple of lessons um, are, t are 20 because they didn't involve a lot of images. Um, you know, there's some um, uh, some information here about, um, let's see, somebody likes GSP from Cre Key Curriculum Press. So some people are suggesting other uh, software packages for creating this kind of, of math notation. So that's... Okay, y'all yeah, can send those to me. It just depends on what your school can afford. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it the cheapest way I can. And so send me um, ideas, and I can gather them up and look into them. If they're, but I, again, I have to go with what is available at our school. Okay, GSP is Geometer Sketchpad. Joe Joiner says, so we got that. Um, and I have to learn more of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. GSP is an acronym for Geo Sketchpad. So okay, we're learning all kinds of things about what things are called and how they and how they work. Let me um, address a question that came up about soft chalk. And that has to do with accessibility, because they were talking about how accessible soft chalk content is. And you know, as I say, in a general webinar, we can go in more detail. But let me just say here that soft chalk has worked long and hard and spent a lot of money um, on making sure that our content is accessible. So we always have ways to create alternate text 
for accessibility to be a top priority. So we, we can spend more time on that. We have a document that describes our accessibility standards, et cetera. Um, and then she says, there's a question here from Lynn that says, in one lesson you said you uploaded something in Word to SoftChalk. How does one do that? Was there? Oh, that was just a hyper, hyperlink for a document. Oh, OK. Oh, do you just create a hyperlink to a Word document and the Word doc and you lo and you launch the Word document that way? Is that what you're saying? Yes. In my conclusion, okay. right. I just here click here for the document, highlight it for your hyperlink. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I had. Steve's going to have to invite me back so I don't have so many lessons to show you. I want to show you <laughs> lots of lessons. Um, and this is the marquee also. And I love, can I show you one more thing? Oh, sure. That soft talk is new, This where you can insert a PowerPoint into slideshow. Because right. if, I use PowerPoint and oh, what? Right. right. Exactly and I do right. PowerPoint where there's where there's animation because in math you don't want the answer to be right there so you click you know and it flies in the answer flies in so if you put your PowerPoint on the slideshow and maybe they just need you know number four of your slide then they can click here and get to the slide that they need and not have to go through all those animations right. but if for class time for teaching I want those animations but for the review this is great to put your slideshow on your PowerPoint. Right. There are about four or five different ways of importing PowerPoint slides into SoftChalk lessons. Uh, this bringing in the images from a PowerPoint slideshow into either our slideshow in SoftChalk or our uh, photo album is new with version 5. So you discovered that, that as well, Marilyn. Yes, <laughs> I'm the impressed. photo album. I'm impressed. Uh -huh. um, and this is great for little jokes also. Or helpful hints to learn how many feet are in a mile. There's a question about making an object created with an equation editor line up with a test on the same line. There's, there, there have been some questions in the past about the way our equation editor lines up with the rest of the text. Are, are you finding that to be a problem? I use the table. OK. If that helps me, go, I mean, helps. the table helps line up everything. Right, but if you want it within the same line, um, then you some then, then then I think if our memory rate is a little high, we have actually got that as a list on our things we want to change. So um, I'm I, I will remember to write that down and make sure it stays there, and we try to get that fixed. Um, okay. This, I don't. Is it something like this? I have the steps, and then I use a table to help explain it. The equation. Right, right, right. But if you actually put an equation editor into a sentence, the equation actually no, would actually right. end up being too high. It would not. It be is. It is. So the table was my fix. See, I like it. Fine. That's that's how I fix the problem by using a table. Right, right. A good solution. A good solution. We have to be creative. Well, we've got a bunch of things, questions coming in, and many of them have to do with issues about soft chalk, which I will answer privately. Uh, can you move part of a lesson to another lesson? How easy is it to do that? With the e-course? Um, no, I think, well, let me try to answer that. Oh, okay. Um, it, it is not transparent in version 5 how to copy and paste from one lesson into another. We're looking at version 6 actually having a feature that allows you to copy and paste content and move it around a lot easier uh, than you can now. So that, it's a very good question. It's, again, on our to-do list. Um, and it'll make things easier as you create content. Um, and I'm looking at some of the questions. So here, this is the equation editor, so I just had to leave it in the middle because I knew having the words here would not look good. So you explain it, and then you show your steps. 
Yes. Or use the table. Anyway, what I think we might want to do at this point, because I think we've handled, we're, we're about out of time, and I want to. Uh, there have been other questions, and so I'm going to take the uh, desktop back from you. Okay. Thank you for putting up with me. Okay. Well, this is this has been great. So I want to just make sure that people know a few things, because people have asked a couple of questions that I want to point them to the right resource for, and. Uh, this is one of a series of Innovators in Online Learning sessions, and if you want to look at the archives, you can come to our website under the Demo tab, and you'll find it there. Matter of fact, since that was a question, let me go. Demos, and if you look here, Innovators, Guest Speakers, you go to Demo, and the Innovator archives are right here. So you can go click on there and go to the long list of archives that are uh, recorded sessions that are available. Um, if you want more information about SoftDruck generally, go to one of our weekly seminar webinars. Um, we also have short courses that talk about specific topics within SoftDruck. So if you want to have a question about creating interactive learning activities or working with tables, you can come to our short courses. They're free. Uh, we can go on site and provide training. We can do webinars, provide training for your faculty if, if you want us to come and do some specific um, development at your institution. We've got a really wonderful set of mini tutorials, one to five minute recorded flash recordings that will discuss and describe various aspects of, ours, of our software. We're upgrading them right now, so they will be very up to date. We've got great documentation, and some of you have asked about Blackboard 9 and some other how to integrate uh, lessons into a learning management system. Come to our website with the documentation, Blackboard 9. We are finalizing the, um, the document uh, on that, the, the guide for that as we speak. And as we said, Marilyn had two of, the, of her lessons get to be honorable mentions. And you can see the math and geometry ones are here, and these are Maryland's lessons, and we had ones in pharmacology, Mendelian genetics, um, Greek mythology, a wide variety of content. If you want to go one that's fun, the food and wine pairing is fun as well. Um, so all these are available on our website. So please come and do that and, and visit and spend some time seeing what we're doing. Lastly, if you want to know more about SoftChalk, you can contact the sales team at this email address if you want some more pricing or information, uh, or you want a, a demo. We can give private demos for your organization. If you want to talk to me, that's my email address. And if you want that documentation for Marilyn, that, sh that Word document that she presented, she'd be glad to send that to you. You simply need to contact her at her email address, which is mlarsen, L-A-R-S-E-N, at com.edu, College of the Mainland. Um, and um, we're, um, I think we are done here. And I want to thank Marilyn for a really fast whirlwind exploration of creating content for our math. And um, you will see that it actually is useful in many disciplines, although her exa examples were math. Marilyn, thank you for a great job. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for coming. Bye-bye now.